Happy New Year, Amboya branding enthusiasts. As we step into 2024, I think it's time to shake off that holiday slumber and reignite our passion for crafting magnetic Amboya brands. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting in this fascinating world of Amboya branding that I love so much, let's talk about how to get you a proper kickstart for an unforgettable year in your job. So take this as an invite and dive with me into practical tips and maybe innovative ideas to elevate your employer brand content and social media marketing to meet the expectations in 2024. Welcome back to the world of building a modern employer brand. My name is Susanna Rantanen, and as one of the top employer branding experts and influencers globally, You are here because you want to learn how to use branding, marketing, and communications for ultimate professional success. Whether you are marketing, communications, HR, talent acquisition, or employer branding professional, with me, you learn how to win sustainable attention in a world where talent attention is no longer a default. Now, as we embrace the new year, it is essential to start with a period of reflection and reassessment of our HR marketing efforts in 2023. The reason why we want to start the year with this is to make sure that we are not repeating anything that didn't work last year, but instead continue with what delivers best results and value for this year. While reflecting on the year 2023, HR marketing data, results, and experiences are all important. This process is, however, not about looking back. It's about learning. It's about using last year as your learning board, setting a solid foundation for this coming season for both employer branding and recruitment marketing. How about that? Now, I have a list, kind of like an action list uh, for you of steps, actions that I think will be worth making in this period of reflection and reassessment. Maybe you want to take a pen. If you don't have a pen with you, don't worry. You will find this list written out at modernemployerbrand.com slash podcast 165. I'll make sure of that. So. Here's the list. First, you want to start with a comprehensive HR marketing data analysis. And I previously spoke about HR marketing data and we'll link you back to it. So you'll find that uh, video or podcast. This will include your social media, your career site data and recruitment marketing data and also recruitment marketing results. Talk to your employees. That's the step number two. You want to get their sentiments, their thoughts, and also their feedback on your HR marketing efforts last year. They're going to be a goldmine for you. So don't ignore this step. Step number three, identify opportunities for improvement based on your data analysis, based on results, and based on that employee feedback. And then you want to set the stage for new. What can you do this year to take your HR marketing to next level? Your audience is likely to welcome a spruce of newness, spruce of innovation. I think they will. Then put more emphasis on content, more than you did last year. What worked? What didn't work? How can you develop your organization's skills in content creation or get a partner to help you level up? And then, this is the final call for employees boarding on that ambassador flight. 
make your employee advocacy opportunities more professional and more beneficial for both parties this coming year. Consistency is vital. Were you consistent with HR marketing last year? If you didn't make it last year, it's time to get consistent this year. It's really vital. You also want to focus on engaging and growing because building brand trust is essential and it will only happen with an engaged audience. They won't engage with you if you don't engage with them. So let them grow with you. You be open to growing yourself in this area. And that's how you make sure that your HR marketing success will also grow. Okay, that is the list. And now I'll take you through it with more detail. Okay, let's talk about that comprehensive HR marketing data analysis. Because you want to begin by reviewing your employer brand marketing activities, as well as your recruitment marketing campaigns in detail from last year. You want to be sure about what were the marketing objectives for employer branding and what were the marketing objectives for recruitment marketing. Make sure that this year you have very clear marketing objectives in place so that you are able to follow the outcome of your marketing efforts also consistently. That will make your review and reflection and reassessment process in 2025 much easier. Look at recruitment marketing metrics such as content engagement rates, click-through rates, and conversion rates uh, in those campaigns. Did you get lots of clicks on the Apply Now button? but you didn't get many job applications or as many job applications. You want to reflect and reassess why there is such a gap in between the number of Apply Now clicks and the number of applications left. What could have caused it? Analyze, did you get a lot of returning visits to your job posts? How long? Did t- people spend on your job post and other career site content? If they left your career site and your recruitment site immediately, then your content wasn't quality content for them. Can you recognize bottlenecks in your recruitment marketing process? That's important so that next year, you don't have, or this coming year, you don't have those bottlenecks, but you're actually able to fill in the holes and fix it before you start hiring again. Then about your employer branding. Did those efforts meet your objectives? Did you grow employer brand awareness? How much did you grow it? Did you grow the size of your organic audience? How much? How did you do in terms of growing employer brand affinity? Or was that even a, an objective for you last year? What about employer brand value conversions? Was it worth for the business to invest in employer branding last year? Would you be able to make a case for the business management to discuss the results and available resources for this year? I don't want you to focus just on the numbers. Also consider the qualitative aspects, such as how well did your recommend marketing campaigns and employer branding activities align with your employer brand's voice and values, the desired perceptions that you were wanting to build on the market. Were you able to tell a compelling story about your company as an employer and as a place to work through your content? Did your recruitment audience pursue consideration in during your uh, recruitment campaign time? Did your recruitment funnel work well enough to deliver leads to talent acquisition? You also want to take a closer look at your social media insight because social media platforms are 
treasure droves of social media marketing inside. So you want to dive into that part of your HR uh, marketing data analytics to understand your audience behavior and their preferences. You want to understand how well your post and your content reached uh, to the usage times and preferences from engagement to post and content types that resonated the most with your audience. Look beyond likes and shares. Take a look at, uh, did you get comments? What kind of feedback did you get? What was the sentiment of those comments? What kind of content sparked conversations the most? Was it your employee spotlights or behind the scenes glimpses or industry insights or the day in the life of your employee in the, in the organization? Because you want to understand these preferences as a guide for your content strategy in 2024. And then that employee feedback, that gold mine of yours, because they are your employee brand's heartbeat. So you want to gather their feedback on how they perceive the employee brand and its representation last year. Was it truthful? Was it genuine? Did they reshare any of the content? Were they proud of it? Do, you, do they want to get involved now that they've seen it sometime? You can do this through surveys, focus groups, or just informal chats. Well, they can be informational too, but informal chats to get their honest opinions. Ask them what aspects of the company culture do they value the most? How do they feel about the way that your employer brand is being portrayed externally? And is there any areas they feel that you should be communicating even more or about the workplace than you are now? I I'm a strong advocate of those employee experiences, and this internal perspective is just invaluable in ensuring your employer brand will be authentic and resonate with your current and future employees. Now, I speak a lot about storytelling because it's part of the magnetic employer branding method. Every employer brand should have a story because you don't really have a brand unless there is that emotional connection that only story can inflict. Now, the power of that story lies in how well it's being told. So if you did try any sort of narrative types of content last year, reflect on those. Were they engaging? Were they authentic? Were they reflective of your company's culture and values? Did they connect with the target audience on an emotional level? That should be seen in engagement and especially in comments. Assessing the effectiveness of your storytelling efforts will help you graft even more compelling narratives in the future. Now, next you want to really identify and make a list of any opportunities from, uh, for improving. Because no employer brand work is perfect, no HR marketing is perfect, and there's always room to grow and be better, especially when you use social media, because social media keeps changing and keeps evolving, and how people use social media keeps changing and evolving. So you want to identify areas where your employer branding strategy and activities fell short last year. Was it in reaching a particular target audience that you meant to reach, but now that you're looking at your follower base, you see that you didn't really hammer that down that well? Did you have clear enough goals, objectives, and the current metrics that are able to indicate your progress in those specific areas, give you the sort of the glimpse into what's working and what isn't? Uh, were your resources enough? Or did you fall short in any areas that needed, uh, that will need more attention this year because uh, you didn't have enough resources last year? Are there any development or learning areas that need better focus this year? Did you build on each of your key employer brand messages equally? Because if you didn't, then your desired employer brand perceptions are going to be lopsided. Did you stick 
with the content plan? Or did you slip in the alleyway of inconsistent messaging? Were you brave enough to leverage new social media platforms, features, and formats? Or were you just repeating the same old, the same old? Recognizing these gaps is the first step toward addressing them. Now, then you want to set the stage for new. With all those reflections in hand, with the list of gaps that you identified, now you are poised to, you know, innovate. Use your learnings to experiment with new approaches, new social media, new types of content, new content formats, new uh, types of messages. It's time to explore new when it comes to social media platforms. Dive into video marketing. That's hot in 2024 too. Or amplify your employee advocacy program. The insights from your reflection will be your guidepost for these innovations. Remember that this reflective exercise is, is not supposed to be just a retrospective to you. It's a proactive step towards a more impactful and resonant employer brand in 2024. And when you understand where you have been, what you missed, what you really thrived in, you can also chart a clearer, more strategic path forward because you want to embrace the new. I think 2024 is all about next steps, becoming better in reaching your goals and objectives and returning that value for the business. Explore emerging trends in employer branding and social media. At the sort of March, April, I think I have gathered enough information that I will start talking about emerging trends and uh, what to focus on with employer branding and social media. So don't forget to follow me and subscribe to this channel or this podcast because you really want to make sure that you're not going to miss any of that. Are there any new platforms where your target audience is active and your employees are telling you that you should test? What about artificial intelligence, virtual reality, or other technological advancements that may be just the thing that resonates really well with your target audience? Talk to your employees. They'll know. Staying ahead of the curve is key to keeping your employer brand fresh and engaging not to mention keep you developing and moving forward on your professional journey. And then about content, because content remains the cornerstone of any successful marketing strategy, including employer brand marketing and your recruitment marketing. And this year, you want to focus on personalized content as well as storytelling. Get your people involved. Speak more directly to your target audience. Make it human to human. Continue to showcase what value working in your organization will provide for your people now and in the future. Showcase it through your company's culture, your ways of work, your purpose, your mission, your values. And it's time to figure out what are your unique selling points as a place to work if you haven't yet. You also want to use a mixture of formats. You want to do long-form copy, that's articles. You want to do videos. You want to do short-form copy, that's social media posts. You want to do polls. You want to do whatever new features social media platforms will provide for us in 2024. Because this will not only cater to diverse preferences, but going for new content types will also give you the algorithm favor. But always remember that authenticity and relatability are your best tools for creating any kind of compelling content for HR marketing purposes. Then about employee advocacy, because we all know that your employees are your best employer brand ambassadors. So you want to encourage them to share their experiences and their stories in your content. But if they're going to do that content on their own, you want to give them guidelines. You want to give them key themes to focus on, but you want to let them do their own thing without interrupting in the middle. 
You want to educate them. You want to inspire them. And you want to collaborate with them in their roles as ambassadors. Employee advocacy, as you know, will not only boost your content's authenticity, but it it will also expand its reach. So you want to provide your ambassadors with incentives to become active participants in your employer branding journey. And then my favorite child, consistency, but also adaptability. Because while consistency in messaging and visual identity are vital, so is adaptability. The digital landscape, it just keeps changing all the time. And so are the audience preferences. So you need to be ready to tweak your content plan based on real-time feedback and analytics. Test different approaches. Learn from them. Check out the uh, previous uh, episode 164 in which I spoke about embracing marketing data in employee branding because that's something that you will like. There's the link. If you're watching the video version of this episode, it's in the video description. And if you're listening, have a look at the uh, uh, podcast platform description. If it's not a working link there, because sometimes it's not, go back to modernemployerbrand.com slash podcast164 for more information. Engage and grow. Social media is not just about broadcasting. It's about engaging. Actively interacting with your audience is so essential. Respond to comments. Participate in relevant conversations. This engagement not only humanizes your employer brand, but it also helps in growing your network and your reach. And when you engage as a company or from your company profile, always add your first name on any comment that you make because that makes it more transparent for the people who are engaging with it. It's so irritating to see companies hiding behind their logos. As we embark on this new journey in 2024, remember that employer branding is an ever-evolving field. So you want to stay curious. You want to be bold in your creativity. And most importantly, you want to have fun with it. This is your year to shine and make your mark in the world of employer branding. So let's make 2024 a year of impactful stories innovative strategies, and magnetic employer brand, because I'm in it with you. And before I let you go, can I remind you about our short survey to gather employer branding people's views, feedback, ideas, and needs when it comes to an employer brand manager program? It will only take you a couple of minutes, but it will be really valuable for us as I believe all of my content has been for you. So you can find the link to this survey on the show notes page for this uh, episode at modernemployerbrand.com slash podcast 165. It's also pinned on my Instagram profile at Randan and Susanna uh, for as long as we keep the survey open. If you're watching the video, it's right below in the video uh, description. Okay, this is it for this week. I'll be back at work next week. I'm still on my winter vacation or my Christmas vacation. But I want to thank you for tuning in to building a modern employer brand. And happy new year, my sweet peas. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a review, and share this episode with your HR, recruitment, marketing, and employer branding colleagues. Moi moi! Moi moi!